what's going on guys welcome back to another video on this epic europe trip and today we're starting things in a car we're heading to liseberg and look we're, who we have with we have liseberg so we have some we have the oh. gang dude we have the danish gang all all danish enthusiasts danish america gang. america and danish unite we are on enemy territory for america. our coaster <laughs> What well, the a, hell is a kilometer? This is already my best <laughs> intro I've ever done, and I'm really excited for this part, guys. I've really I wanted to come here for years, actually. I've heard amazing things. Obviously, you got Helix, you got Balder, you got Valkyria. I'm gonna get copyrighted, I'm gonna end the clip, goodbye. Already, this park setting is very interesting because we have the city of Gothenburg, and then you look over here, there's the entrance. It reminds me a lot of how Tivoli Gardens is just smack dive in the middle of Copenhagen, Denmark. However, I, I, from what I'm hearing, this is Tivoli Gardens on mega steroids. This is gonna be absolutely fantastic. This place looks amazing. Right off the bat, I want to give a shout out to Liseberg for providing us with complimentary admission. And you want to tell them what else they're doing for us later? Yeah, so at 1.30, um, by the way, shout out Pontus. He's the one that's been communicating with me. Uh, yeah, he's he's going to meet up with us at 1.30 at Balder. And he says he has a surprise. So Not sure what that means. Don't he's know also, what a surprise is. He also said he's going to throw something else in there. So I, I don't know what Liseberg has planned for us, but they have something cool. So. Yeah, I mean, they're spoiling us clearly. All we asked is complimentary admission in exchange for a vlog. And, you know, if, if it's a no, that's never even a bad thing either. It's just something that we appreciate as, as people that travel. And it's obviously very expensive to go on a trip this big. Um, but, yeah, the fact that they're spoiling the hell out of us is really awesome. So shout out Liseberg. You guys are absolutely fantastic. We are riding Luna the family boomerang because we don't like lines and it has bad capacity. Doing the family coaster first. Yeah. Good start, you know. <laughs> Let's go. All right, we're on our first ride of the day. Luna, the Coma family boomerang and the largest one of these ever built, actually. And I always enjoy these for what they are. Just got off of our first ride here at Liseberg. It's a Luna family boomerang and a really fun ride. Definitely a good fit for the park, uh, just right off the bat, even though we haven't done anything else. So uh, I don't know what we're doing next. What are we doing next? Well, I mean, Helix is nearby, Valkyria, everything is nearby. I here. think Helix <laughs> sounds pretty good. I would definitely like to do Helix pretty soon. Um, obviously that's the mock multi-launch coaster here at the park. Very iconic ride. Probably the most iconic roller coaster here in Sweden, I'd be willing to bet. This thing is absolutely stunning. I've already seen some shots of it. It's just absolutely gorgeous the way it utilizes the terrain. Cannot wait to ride this coaster. I've heard amazing things about it. Oh boy, up next is gonna be Valkyria, the park's BNM dive coaster. Always enjoy a good dive coaster. It's gonna be a fantastic ride. It's time for Valkyria. Dude, I'm soaked. First major coaster at the park. Wow, the view is amazing. Let's go, baby. I'm stoked. Whoa. Yes, yes. Oh my. I love Honestly, it. Honestly, this is amazing, this view. This is gorgeous. Here we go. <laughs> coasters by far all right we just got off of valkyria fantastic bnm dive coaster i think i enjoy the dive coasters more and more the more i ride them dude valkyria is the best dive coaster i've done i really love that good to hear it's yeah, great pacing isn't it yo yeah it's really really fast and uh, it's not the most intense but like it's just really fun and it's really very smooth. And very, very smooth yeah. smoothest dive coaster i've ridden yeah it's got like a surprise airtime moment it halfway does, through as well yeah. how'd you like it 
Yeah, that, I told Mark, I'm not a fan of dive coasters, but that was my favorite one and I genuinely enjoyed it. Very good ride. I just find it really hard to rank the dive coasters because they are kind of really difficult to rank. I mean, you have Sheikra, you have Griffin, you have Emperor, you have this. Like, they're all so close together, but I feel like the order just doesn't make sense for me. I I'd think, never know how to order them. I think layout wise, purely from a coaster aspect, Emperor probably is the best, but I think as an overall experience, this one. This one definitely is better than Emperor, only because of the theming and presentation, but Emperor's layout is about on par, I'd say. So really, that's kind of what beats it out. Sheikra and Griffin are just absolutely massive and speed demons, you know, but they also don't really have the package like this thing does. This is absolutely gorgeous. The soundtrack is amazing. The station's one of my favorites, and the color scheme is the best I've ever seen on a B&M, maybe. Definitely top three, top five. It's absolutely gorgeous, this ride. Up next is Balder. I'm so excited to ride another Intamin Free Fab. This is actually my third of four in the world. After this, all I'll have left is T Express and Everland in South Korea. Gotta love the Intamin fart. It's gonna be awesome. I'm super excited because Balder was actually closed all of last year because Intamin Free Fabs are just always having issues. But nonetheless, it's gonna be fantastic. I'm so excited to ride Balder, dude. Let's freaking go. Woo! Balder, baby! Let's go, Balder! Closed all last year. Woo! Finally reopened in 2023. This is gonna be sweet. Balder! Woo! So smooth! Ah! I stood up! Oh my god! I love it! <laughs> That was so stupidly smooth. So this guy actually doesn't really like El Toro much at all. No. Uh, not a fan. So I guess roughness is part of the reason, right? Roughness, um, I will give El Toro the, the edge on intensity, obviously. It's an intense freaking ride. This one was cool though, because it was actually one of the more unique wooden coaster experiences, I felt like. It's a very interesting airtime that I'm not used to on the most coasters. Very unique, smooth. yeah, because what would happen is the ride's extremely graceful and actually kind of slow on the overbanks. The overbanks do nothing. But yeah. what it does is it builds you up to the airtime hills, which are just extremely sudden. The airtime is extreme. So what, it's, it's, it's like you're on a pogo stick. Like, dude, you're yeah, going so slow and you're not expecting anything at all. And then you're just psh, like just shot up <laughs> out of your seat over and over and over again. It's really awesome. How was that? Dude, that was so much ejector airtime. I don't care about the overbanks. The airtime is all <laughs> worth it. I love yeah. that. That's awesome. I enjoyed that more yeah. than Valkyria for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, we have the best way better. so far. Way Looking forward to doing Helix. Though. Top 13 coaster. Some live somewhere <laughs> in there. <laughs> How'd you like that? Yeah, I, I, I love Bella so much. And very strong ejector. Very I good. I think it's definitely superior to, for example, Colossus. Yeah, I was thinking about that. It, I, I wonder how it'll compare to Colossus with some re rides. Because to me, Colossus still has the best three elements between the two rides. But this has so much more airtime and it's much more consistent, <laughs> right? So, yes. Yeah. If, Fantastic I, I still coaster. Think this has the strongest airtime. Strongest airtime, yes. yes I think Fair so. point. Oh my god, we're about to get on Lisa Bergman. Here's Helix. Yeah, I can't wait to do Helix next. Uh, but yeah, this is awesome. This is one of two Zero Schwarzkopf hybrids in the world. Very interesting. The other one's Jetline. We're going to talk about that when we get to Grunel in a few days. A very unfortunate accident just happened on that one. Here we are. Oh, I love the view. Look at this, dude. This wow. is amazing. Gothenburg is beautiful. All right. I have no words to describe. 
describe this. You go around three times down this drop. This is so freaking cool, dude. What a cool ride. Oh, all the way out here. Wow, look at the setting, dude. This is amazing. Oh, oh my gosh. This is absolutely freaking awesome. right now this thing is going all over the place okay that was probably one of the most unique rides i've ever been on period that layout was phenomenally unique fascinating fascinating ride i genuinely love that that was sweet i absolutely loved lisa bergmanen it's like the best of both worlds between Schwarzkopf and Zero. It's such a cool ride. And I think that layout is one of the most fascinating I've ever seen. There's a Rose Bowl section with three parallel like helixes. It's just so bizarre. How was that? Dude, that oh, was I love so that gross. I love that gross. I love how it follows the terrain. Yes, it's yeah. such a journey. It is. Yeah. With the view of the city um, as well at the same time. Like we enter in the forest, went out to a beautiful view. Not to talk about also have some very good lateral and outside parts. Yeah, that had to be one of my favorite family coasters I've ever been on. I absolutely adore that. I basically agree with everything Bill has said as well. Yeah, it's great. Next up, atmosphere, no. Actually, we're going to Helix. There's an escalator to go up. Guys, I'm so excited for Helix. I've been waiting all day for this. It's so funny you have to take an escalator to the station, but I know there's actually a pre-launch, but yes, it's gonna be so sweet. I cannot believe it. We're on Helix. Oh shoot, we're on Helix right now. Oh, already! Here we go! The forces were a little bit disappointing, I thought. I'm opposite, I liked it. I thought it was great. It was definitely great, but definitely not elite in my opinion either. I wanna try that again in the back. I love the airtime. Uh, the launches suck, obviously, we knew that. Inversions are fun, but yeah, the inversions didn't really have the whip I was expecting. Actually, I felt like the second launch was awesome because it goes uphill and you're watching the inverted top hat the entire time. Yeah, it, it is true. It's really fun. I do love that, that element. It, no, don't get me wrong, I enjoy that very much, but I can't say, it was actually what I was expecting because I knew I probably wouldn't like go head over heels for this ride. Um, but yeah, we'll try it in the back, of course. We just got off of Helix and I definitely enjoyed it, but I have some like kind of mixed feelings about certain elements on that ride. I will say the pre-launch section was really fun. The ride was very smooth, which a lot of mock coasters tend to shuffle a little bit. The launches just suck. I think those launches are very disappointing in my opinion. The inversions are good fun, but didn't pack in the whip I was expecting. The air time was excellent. That I thought was great. Uh, and the ride's very long. I love the terrain usage. Uh, I like the variety of inversions. I like what they chose. I just didn't think the forces were necessarily what I was looking for. So I think the whole group kind of has the same thoughts where we all really liked it. It came off slightly disappointed. And maybe, you know, it's gonna warm up. Maybe a back row ride would be the best. It really could go either way. So yeah, I, I, as we'll Write it more times, give a full analysis on the coaster as the day uh, progresses. But I mean, I'm definitely happy with the ride we got. I'm looking forward to more. But yeah, it's nothing so unbelievable in my opinion. It didn't blow me away. You like it? <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it so much. It's gorgeous, that's for sure. Nick is out here nerding over the shots of this thing. It is a beautiful ride. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Ha ha ha. Just eye out there too. That's so funny. 
I did want to ask you, Nick, what did you think of it? Because it is your first time, just like us two. Yeah, I, I was just a tad disappointed, but it was still, it's still a top 10 character. It's, it's really good because it has a lot of positive forces. And great sustained ejector moments and a really good whip mode. and of course the terrain view everything so i i love it i hope that i loved it just a tad more but i love it <laughs> maybe we will later so yeah exactly it's still it early the back row might be better yeah we have a variety of better force flies force flies okay yes that's sure. good to hear because in my opinion the forces were the most disappointing thing about helix i think uh, the thing is when you uh, go in the front row you'll get some forward hang time uh, on the inversions where in the back row you will get it in the top, so that's been real hang time. So, how do you like it? I uh, think it's really fun. Uh, I'm glad to, I'm glad to be back uh, and try it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, so uh, it's 1:30. We've met Pontus here. Hi, guys. He's super cool. Um, he's showing us around. So today, we are actually behind the scenes right now with Balder. Um, Balder is their huge Intamin prefab. It's pretty fun. One of four, I believe, in the world, correct? Yes, very fun. Um, we enjoyed this on our rides this morning. Anyways, this is kind of an inside look. Um, Pontus, is there anything you want to say about the ride or how it works? Uh, it's quite easy, actually. You press the buttons. So the operator inside here, press two buttons, and then you have one button on the left side and one button on the right side. All buttons need to be pushed at the same time, otherwise you can't dispatch the train. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, we have two trains, uh, one blue, one red, and you can also see at the lockers that we have different colors of that. Uh, top speed is 90 kilometers per hour, and the length is uh, 1,070 meters. It was voted the best Woody in the world in 2003 and 2005. Well deserved. Very awesome. Well deserved. And we very much enjoyed our ride this morning. There's some great airtime on this coaster. We um, built it because of the airtime. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell it was designed yeah. for airtime. <laughs> it's a great yeah, coaster. Hit it out of the park with that. Very cool. Our friend here says he's got a pretty amazing day planned for us. We have no idea what's going so on. Backstage area. We're totally nerding so out. If we have any rides or for stuff that needs to be fixed it goes in here and then we have several other rooms inside the building depending on what needs to be done mock ride zero wow. new water park stuff nice yeah, this is very go. cool building their uh, first water park a lot of you guys know that i do the social media for wild rivers water park in california so i'm very familiar very nice Bye. All right, guys, here, how do you pronounce it? Jubileumsprojektet. Yes. Try to pronounce that. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Jubileumsprojektet. <laughs> Jubileumsprojektet. <laughs> this is their new water park that we're about to come see, I believe. Um, this is going to be very exciting. We'll definitely have to come back and check out this water park at some point. Behind the scenes look yeah. at what it's like so to build something like this. Okay. Outside. Uh, we don't go in right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you come in here to the lobby, and here to the left you will have the reception. And uh, it will be a lot of things on the walls and uh, on the roofs. It will be nice to just come in, have a wow feeling. And here is uh, the dry corridor when you come in normal clothes. And then you enter the, uh, the room, that you, the changing room. Yeah. Okay. So basically, we are here now. Uh, so here you have all the changing room, the lobby, cafe, and the personal space. Um, here's the kitchen, and you will have the bar here, so people will be uh, able to sit and eat right up here. And then this, of course, uh, is the main hall with all the slides and the waiting pool. And this is where we were uh, just before with the. Lazy River. Very nice. That drop on the Master Blaster water coaster they're working on is just ginormous. Very cool. Wow. So, the red one is the Master Blaster, and then you have the yellow one, the Rango. And then you have two more slides a green one and a, a blue one. Uh, that's also quite big. Valkyria. 
paints on this side and one paint on the other side. Beautiful. It hasn't happened yet, but if we need to remove the frames and send it back to Europe somewhere, uh, you have the hook over there so you can push it out from the uh, building to the left. But we have just used it once, and that is when the trains arrived in 2018. And if you ever wonder how big the wheels are. Oh my oh gosh! My okay. Do you get a video of that? Someone video of that. Big wheels. Unfreaking real, dude. <laughs> Wait, hang on, don't. Wow. And here's your, uh, pretty awesome, here's your guys. station for Valkyria, BM dive okay. coaster. That's pretty cool. I feel like we're in a pre show. <laughs> so, even if this is a BM coaster, the shower is developed by Matt Rice. Let's go, Mark. Hey. You can send to us back then or click on this team. Wow. Super neat. So, you can follow the train on the screens where we can control the train. Okay. So, after the drop until the brake run is for itself. Okay, I see. So whenever a coaster passes a block or is sitting on that section, you can see the LEDs light up. That's very neat. Then of course, I noticed too, all the operators had their cameras so they can, they can also visually see um, to prevent any sort of accidents from happening. It's very interesting. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed your virtual ride with us on Lisa Bird Bonnet. Um, one of my personal favorites, maybe honestly, weirdly, my favorite here. This was designed by Zerer and Anton Schwarzkopf, uh, as well as Werner Stengel, who I should give credit to. As Pontus mentioned as well, um, it's very interesting the way this ride was designed because a lot of the assets from Zerer actually came directly from Schwarzkopf. Yeah, it's based on that Schwarzkopf coaster because he was the main designer of it. And from the beginning, uh, we almost built a coaster from Big Forma. Uh, but Schwarzkopf himself came here with his hat, a big blueprint <laughs> on his arm, knocked on the door and said, hey, I have to sign a coaster for you. And uh, when we looked at blueprints, that was a much better design. So uh, we took the diploma a few years later, so we could have this uh, Schwarzkopf design. And we designed it with the mountain, and we wanted to keep as many trees as possible at that time. So the first year, you had much more branches over the track, so it felt like head choppers. Uh, yeah. uh, it's uh, over 35 years old now. So we have added more rides to the mountain, so you don't see as many trees anymore. But it's a great, a great coaster. It's a great ride. And again, I just really want to emphasize that history here at Liseberg. They're celebrating 100 years. How cool is that? 100 um, years. And as he also mentioned something fun too while we were walking over. I believe you said this was Anton Korskov's favorite ride that yes, he designed. <laughs> all his coats he designed, this was his favorite. We are really proud of that. This may be my favorite Schwarzkopf, period. That was fun, it's but hey, now it's time for the last section of the tour mm -hmm. with uh, arguably their best coaster and one of the most famous rides in the entire world. Um, Helix. Helix. Let's do it. Wow. This is the workshop for Helix at Liseberg. I feel like we're on another like Earth. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> oh my god guys new coaster for valley fair coming soon yeah but basically it's almost the same as uh, Valkyria you see the launches launch one and launch two yes and that it came into the break run I see yeah yeah very neat very neat how do you guys register the blocks on these the blocks uh, we have uh, four blocks and three trains so um, you use the launches as blocks, so it's one block between the launches and one block between the station and the first launch, and one block between the second launch and the brake run. Yeah. And then you have a, a brake run and the waiting fields. Let's get another ride on the legendary Helix. All right, time for the background Helix this time. I'm really excited to see how this is. We've had such an amazing time, thanks to Pontus here at Liseberg. He's been taking us behind the scenes on almost everything, all the new stuff they're working on in the water park. All right, time for the back row. No talking. Let's enjoy. Whoa! Oh!
First launch. That was probably a good 17 times better in the back row than the front. The back row was fantastic. Fucking amazing on the back row. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That was fantastic in the back row. Pontus, that was absolutely amazing in the back row. That was fantastic. That was way better in the back. I know, right? <laughs> that was, that was absolutely fantastic. I still do stand by what I said. After the first launch, the first, the first few elements after that are a little bit. Eh. Yeah, it gets better. A it does definitely. Right. In the middle section was incredible. Yeah, the forces were all amazing, and like you said, Dude. that one whippy transition. And in the back, that last Camelback feels like, or at least reminds me a lot of Condes first Camelback. I agree with that. It's like yeah, it just gets incredible stronger. air time. Yes, I agree. It's oh my god. That is fantastic. I'm so glad you like it. Oh my god. That went from like a top maybe 75 coaster to like a top 40 in a, in a blink. That was absolutely awesome. We just wrapped up an incredible tour around Liseberg and behind the scenes at Liseberg with the legendary Pontus. Dude, yeah. absolutely <laughs> awesome. Josiah? I mean, yeah, it was it was just a fantastic experience overall. Uh, it was really cool to see behind the scenes stuff, how they operate some of these world-class coasters. I thought it was phenomenal. Yeah, and, and we both wanted to mention that we're so grateful that we had this opportunity. Obviously, it's not something that your average visitor gets. And I know a lot of people that do get things like this are not necessarily so grateful yeah. for the experience and maybe a little entitled because of it. And that's what I said in Nick's vlog. Yeah. I think a lot of the time, like, enthusiasts to get these privileges just let it go to their head. Dude, we're so grateful to be here at the end of the day. Like, we don't... We, we would have been, we would have been grateful to be here, happy. period. So, you know? Yeah, we're just... We stuck. want to support the parks. <laughs> that's part of the reason we do these vlogs is because we want people to come visit and support them. Yeah. We love what we do. We love amusement parks. We love riding roller coasters. At the end of the day, we're just one big community that loves and shares the same passion, which I think is beautiful. So, Nick, how'd you enjoy that? Dude, Pontus is the GOAT. The fact that we were able to do this and so much, I, I don't deserve it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, wow. I'm speechless. It's really, really hard to figure out what to say about this. It's it's just, I mean, come here. I mean, the people here are so friendly. This park has been amazing. Even yeah. without the tour, the park has been amazing. Yeah. Operationally, the rides, uh, the staff, the landscaping, the park yeah. is beautiful. That's the oh thing as well, like, uh, something we figured out when we went into the ride booths is just how down to earth and chill the ride operators are. Like, yeah. I love that No, so with, by walking By walking around with Pontus, we really got a good feel uh, as to how the people around the park, yeah. how they care for their rides and attractions, guests. How much guests, charm there is. Genuinely, you can tell they care so much, and that's something you lack in America. At a lot of American parks, like Six Flags parks, you don't get that. People don't want to be there. It's it's the truth, and so it genuinely warms my heart to see people loving what they're doing here at these European parks like Liseberg. It's honestly awesome. So. Really enjoyed that. Thank you so much, Fontes. We'll definitely be back at Liseberg in the future. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Liseberg is an awesome park, as I said. I genuinely recommend coming here. Thoughts on Liseberg, guys? What do you think? I love this park. It is one of my favorite parks in, in Europe, for Easy, sure. Yes. It's really an amazing park. It's uh, so compact, so small, and feels so big, and whoa, it's oh, one class. It's just beautiful, there's green everywhere. The, it's one of those picturesque parks I've ever been to and I could not complain about a single thing. I don't know what we're talking about, but I assume it's the uh, park and I think it's really cool too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely awesome. So thank you all so much for watching. See you the next time. Bye guys.